Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. This is the first time I'm reviewing a machine that is still under development and has not been released to the market yet. This Maker Pi P3 Pro is an IDEX 3D printer with six interchangeable tool heads. Their Kickstarter campaign should launch soon and it should be ready to ship in the second half of 2022. I would like to thank MakerPie for sending me this printer to review. I will see what this machine can do and talk about what I think of it. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. Just like other new generation 3D printers, this machine is almost pre-assembled. We have the base, the gantry, six tool heads, two spool holders, some cables, and accessories. The assembly is pretty straightforward, and I will just go through it quickly. First, I will put the gantry on the base. Since the screws are tightened underneath, I will move the printer to the side of the table. Use the four longest screws you can find in the bag, and use two on the first side. Do the same to the other side. Then, we will install two print heads. Since this is an IDEX printer, the two print heads can work together at the same time. We will start with the two basic print heads. They are labeled as common filament with a maximum temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. Grab eight M4 screws from the bag, and you need four screws on each print head, and tighten the screws from the back. Do the same to the E2 print head. Next, we will install these two filament residue holders and wipers. They should be installed on both sides right under the place where the print heads are parked. Adjust the height to make sure the rubber can wipe the print head when it's coming back to the parking position. Do the same to the other side. We will mount the filament holders on the top and tighten them with T-nuts. Let's connect the cables starting with the left side. Remove the tape and connect the Z-stepper motor and limit switch. Then, connect the cable coming from the base to the left side of the gantry, one for the X-limit switch and one for the X-stepper motor. There are two larger cables. We will use the wider one for this E1 extruder. Connect it to the top of the extruder and tighten the two thumb screws. The only cable from the extruder is used to connect the filament sensor. Let the long cable go over the top and connect the other end to the base. Secure it with two thumb screws and we will do the same to the other side. As this is a dual Z-axis printer, we will connect the second Z-axis stepper motor and the Z-limit switch, followed by the E2 extruder limit switch and the X stepper motor. Use the other large cable to connect the print head, the small cable from the extruder to connect the filament sensor, go over the top, and connect the other end to the base. The Y-limit switch cable is located at the back. Finally, check the voltage of the power supply. I will flip it to 115 volts and the machine is now ready. I will do auto home and adjust the four corners to level the bed. This machine has auto bed leveling, but making the bed as level as possible first is even more important for an IDEX printer. As the two print heads are actually printing on different areas of the bed when using copy or mirror mode, the bed leveling sensor will not be able to adjust the Z height to compensate for an unlevel bed under these two modes. The interesting part is that MakerPie told me they are working on this part and they are trying to avoid manual leveling completely. I'm curious about how they can actually do that on an IDEX printer, but for now, I will just manually move the print head around the bed and use a wrench to adjust the corners. The second thing you need to do manually on an IDEX printer is to make sure both print heads are the same height. You need to open the cover of the E2 extruder, loosen these two screws, and use the screw with the spring at the back to adjust the height. I will move both print heads to the same spot and use the paper test to adjust it. Once you get the same drag feel on the paper for both print heads, you can tighten back these two screws and close the cover. Now we can do auto bed leveling. Go to settings, ABL, and this printer uses an IR sensor on all E1 extruders for bed leveling. After the auto home is done, it tells you to remove the print surface to continue. I notice that it always uses the center point of the bed and compares the height with four corners. When I did test prints later, I didn't see any accuracy issues with this IR sensor, but the speed of homing and bed leveling is slower than a BL Touch and its variants. After a while, it tells you to put back the print surface and we can set the Z offset. On the menu, it's called Z min initialize here. 
It's going to do that at the bottom left corner, and we will do the same paper test and move the nozzle close enough to slightly drag on the paper. For this print head, negative 0.3 seems fine. Press OK and it will home itself again. I will insert the USB drive that came with the printer and print a calibration G-code file, select print, E2 nozzle offset, and let's print the only G-code file here. Select standard mode and start the print. I installed white PLA on the E1 extruder and it's now printing two white rollers for the X and Y axis. It's followed by the E2 extruder with green PLA and it's now printing the same rollers next to the white ones. You need to check the longest center line, and it seems the printer is aligned perfectly. If not, you need to follow the menu and add or subtract the numbers inside the E2 offset menu to align them. We are ready to start the first test print. I will start with the dual mode, which means both extruders will be working together to print a two-color model. We have this rabbit G-code. Let's print it and see how it looks. It seems it also prints a prime tower to let the print head extrude some filament before printing the actual model. It should take more time, but the print would look nicer with this tower. This rabbit is printed without support, so the area around the lips has some filament that isn't sticking well, but it still looks fine. We can simply use a flush cutter to trim them. Besides that, this model looks really nice. The prime tower actually spent one fourth of the time of the whole print. This print took more than 24 hours to complete, so I would suggest the manufacturer put some simple prints with a time on the file name. Most users would be excited to test out the printer with some test prints, but not be quite as excited to start with a 24-hour model. Next, I will go to my computer and set up the slicer and slice the models as I don't want to print another test file that takes that long. I will install the older Cura 4.8.8 with the profile of this printer on the USB drive that came with the printer. Just use all default settings and it should be completed in a few minutes. Once the program starts the first time, we will add all three profiles for this printer, including the single mode, mix mode, and dual mode. Now, we have three printer profiles available on the list. Let's do a copy mode on this Captain America head. I will use single mode and move the head to the left side of the bed so it will automatically make a copy on the right side of the bed using the second extruder. Slice the file and save it to the USB drive. Go back to our printer, select the file, and we are going to use duplicate mode. In this mode, both extruders are working together to make two models at the same time. The print quality seems really nice, but the time took 3 hours longer than the Cura estimated time. Afterwards, I will try mirror mode. I downloaded this boot from Thingiverse. It's a boot on the right side. I will put it on the left side of the bed and slice the model, just like what I did with the Captain America model, but this time I will select mirror mode instead. As you can see, the printer mirrors the model, and we now have a pair of boots with both the left and right sides. Next, I will use Fusion 360 to make a simple cone. Then, draw a sketch on the vertical plane. Duplicate the components, cut them into different sections, and use two different colors to print it. I have to save them into two different models. Drag them into Cura and switch to dual mode. Select this model to print with the first extruder the other model to print with the second extruder, merge them and place it at the center of the bed. Slice this model and print it from the printer. This print was completed in about an hour. Without using the prime tower, it prints faster, but the quality is not as good as the rabbit. Next, 
I will try the mixing extruder. I will use face mode to print. In Cura, it's called the spiralized outer contour. I have changed the filament to red and green PLA to try with this mixing extruder. Set the mode to mix mode on the printer. Once you print the file, it lets you select three different mixing options. I will try them all and start with the gradient mixing option. Then, I will try the Fixed Proportion option. Finally, the Random option. You can compare the results and see which one you like most. Then, I will try the Flexible Filament Extruder. As I only have one type of TPU, I can actually print it on almost any direct extruder printer and even a stock Bowden setup with slower speed. I tried to print one with this flexible filament extruder. I printed another one using the basic print head. The results are pretty close, and I think this looks a bit nicer as the extrusion seems more consistent. It would be more helpful if the manufacturer can provide a list of best fit filaments for the extruder. For example, sure a durometer of 85 is okay to print with a standard extruder, and ultra flexible like sure a durometer of 60 must use the flexible filament print head, and so on. For the high temperature print head, I will try to print a gear with nylon filament. It's a PA6 with 25% carbon fiber. I don't use this material very often, as they are very expensive, costing almost $100 per kilogram. I will print this part at 300 degrees and the bed at 60 degrees with no cooling. Using a glue stick would also be a safer approach. Let's start the print. You can compare it to the one printed with PLA. Finally, I will test out this laser module. This is a very basic laser module. The power is just 0.5 watts, which should be okay for some light engraving, but don't expect it to be able to cut through wood. The manufacturer recommends using Inkscape, but there is no further instruction on how to use it or what extension has to be installed in order to generate G-code that works for this printer. So, I will still use the free laser gerbil to generate the G-code and show you how to modify it. The main difference is that Laser Gerbil uses M3 or M4 to control the laser, S1000 for full power, and S0 for no power. For this 3D printer laser module, it uses M106 S255 for full power, and M106 S0 for no power. So, we need to change all M3 and S1000 to M106 S255, which uses maximum fan power to turn on the laser. We also need to change S0 to M106S0 for turning off the laser, so the G-code file should be able to run on this printer. By default, the manufacturer suggested moving the Z-axis up 25mm, and we will follow that for now. Unlike a real laser engraver, you can turn on the laser dot, jog the machine to the exact position, and start the job. In this case, I will set the feed rate to 1500 to do a quick engraving on a paper first. Once I figure out the position on the paper, I will now put a piece of wood on top of the paper and change the feed rate to 400. The wood is about 35 millimeters thick. I will also change the Z height to 60. Okay, we will do the same job again on the wood. As you can see, if you edit the G-code and use this method to engrave on the paper first and use it to position your material, you should be able to get a reasonable result even with this low power laser module. Okay. After all these tests, I would say it does have all the features that they claim this machine is capable of, including standard IDEX features like dual color mode, copy mode, and mirror mode. The filament mixing print head, the flexible filament print head, the high temperature print head, and the laser module are all working. The print quality is also quite good out of the box. For the hardware, the linear rail of the x-axis is very rigid. The metal base is heavy, and it uses all optical limit switches on all axes. Other features include auto bed leveling, dual Z axis, and belt tensioners. It is a pretty solid printer. But there are also some improvements I would like to suggest. 
first, for tool head switching, using four screws at the back is fairly easy, and I can live with it. However, there are obviously better solutions out there, like those snap-on magnetic and push and lock tool changers. Second, adjusting the height of the E2 print head is required to open the cover. Loosening two screws and adjusting the height using a wrench to turn another screw at the back is a little too complicated. I would suggest moving the stepper motors to the side so you have enough room at the top to let the user access a thumb screw at the back and use a stronger spring-loaded screw. So, opening the cover and tightening the other two screws inside to lock it in place is no longer necessary. It also allows the user to adjust the height when printing. As this printer is still a prototype, some minor software issues are expected. For example, the screen UI is not that pretty, and some features like the Live-Z offset, print speed, and flow rate adjust are still missing. There's also some firmware tweaking needed to be addressed, the slow bed leveling and auto homing speed. Additionally, I'd also suggest adding more slicer profiles for different printing modes for a smoother workflow, better documentation, and higher quality instruction videos to make things easier for beginners to follow. The good thing is that MakerPie is still working on this printer. After I received this machine weeks ago, I kept getting mainboard and screen firmware updates from them. I did see some changes between different versions, and so I am expecting to see some more improvements before they launch the final product. As of today, they haven't released the price of the machine yet, so I have no idea what the lowest early bird price for their Kickstarter campaign is, but I put their link under the description. If you're interested in getting a good deal on Kickstarter, you can subscribe to their newsletter. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. This Maker Pi P3 Pro. Maker Pi P3 Pro. I would like to thank Maker. No, that's wrong. It's not right. Today, I will. Re no, that's not right either. Okay. So I have no idea what the lowest early bid price for their Kickstarter early bird price. So I have no idea what the lowest...